if not for anybody else, if you could care less about my brown ass, you don't, you could care less about anyone, anyone black. If you care about yourselves and if you care about your kids, go do something. Welcome to the Kindness Is podcast, where we take a deep dive into the true meaning of kindness. I'm your host, Caitlin Johnstone, the co-founder of Kind Cotton. Let's dive in. Hey, everyone. You know what I get asked more than anything ever is, Caitlin, what can I do? What can I do when I feel so alone and so isolated and like I am screaming into the void about any sort of social justice issue? And if you are one of those people, I want you to listen to this episode all the way through, and then I want you to act. Because this is the answer. This is what we can do. This is the starting point. And I am so beyond proud and hopeful and inspired by my guests today. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Kindness Is Pod. I am super excited because today I have with me Syra Rao. You've probably heard me talk a lot about her if you've been paying attention whatsoever to our page recently. She is an absolute powerhouse of a human being, and I'm just so grateful to even know you, Syra. So just to tell you all a little bit about her background, she is the co-founder of Here for the Kids, an abolitionist movement to ban guns and fossil fuels. She is also the co-founder of Race to Dinner, co-author of New York Times bestseller, White Women, Everything You Already Know About Your Own Racism and How to Do Better, and the subject of the documentary, Deconstructing Karen. Thank you, Syra, for being here. Thanks, Caitlin. It's wonderful to be chatting with you this Sunday night. I know. I'm very, this almost didn't happen. We um, we have a lot of exciting things coming out this next week, particularly new information about Here for the Kids, a lot of stuff that we're going to be sharing about on our end. And I was like, Syra, I hate to do this to you, but is there any way we can chat in the next couple of days? And somehow we're getting it in. So thank you. Amazing. Yeah. So tell everyone, I mean, I shared your bio, which is, I think just a snippet of who you are and what you do. But if you could kind of give people a brief overview of the work that you have been doing for the past couple of years, that would be awesome. Sure. Why don't we start with Race to Dinner? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm South Asian. My co-founder at Race to Dinner is a Black woman. And together, we we started this in February of 2019, so four four and a half years ago. we have actual dinners with white women all over the world um, in real life for the most part, sometimes over Zoom. We went to Zoom when COVID hit um, between eight to 10 white women at a time. And we literally sit down with them and have dinner and have radically honest conversations about racism, not somebody else's racism, not their husband's racism, not their father's racism, not Republicans' racism, not those white people in the South's racism, their own racism. And, um, you know, for many of these white women, they've never had a conversation like this before. They certainly have not acknowledged their own racism uh, in front of other people out loud and broken it down. So that's it. We, we had one recently in Fort Lauderdale and, you know, we're, we're done with those for the year at the moment, but we've, we've just done them all over the place and they've all just been really exciting. So um, we started that in 2019. In the summer of 2019, a full year before white people discovered systemic racism when George Floyd was murdered and then promptly forgot a couple months later, um, Mm -hmm. Patty Ivan Specht, a white woman documentary filmmaker, came out from L.A. and filmed one of our dinners. Um, It was one of our first dinners. And um, she, you know, we were like, right, this white lady is going to actually do a documentary when she said she wanted to do a documentary. And then she did. And that came out last November, so November 2022, so about eight, 10 months ago, that film came out, Deconstructing Karen. So Regina and I now are on a global tour showing the film and having talkbacks. And we were just in Bath in the UK, in London in the UK, Portland, Seattle, Vancouver, my goodness, I'm just trying to think, Um, Atlanta, Denver. 
uh, LA. And so our big one for the year, that's going to be the last one of the year is going to be in New York city on October 27th at town hall in Midtown Mount Manhattan, like very iconic off Broadway theater. So everyone in the New York city area, please come um, October 27th. And, um, and we have a New York times bestselling book came out on November one. And it really is deconstructing Karen is like an actual dinner. So you can see it and white women, our book really walks you through everything that we have learned, um, have known, like we've known, but mm -hmm. that we've also learned really sort of clearly through our race to dinner program. And it just spells it out. What is, what does toxic white womanhood look like? That's it. It's all right there. And it is now maybe seventh, eighth, ninth printing upwards of a hundred thousand books in circulation. It's a gigantic hit, which is really exciting. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's where we are. Yeah, it's amazing. If you do not have that book or you have not watched the film and you are listening to this, you have to do so right away. I watched the film with my family last year for Thanksgiving, you know, because we haven't celebrated a traditional Thanksgiving in uh, quite a few years. So I said, hey, this is the perfect thing to do this year. If we're going to get together and we're going to have a meal, we're going to do this too. Uh, and the book has spurred so many different conversations. I'm currently doing a book club surrounding it. And it's really, I like to refer to it as a white woman Bible. And I'm, I'm not kidding you. Like it is, it is everything you need step by step. That's going to make you feel really uncomfortable, but it's going to make you talk and it's going to make you reflect. And if you get through it, I promise you're going to come out on the other end, hopefully doing something. Because I mean, that's that's the problem right now, right? I mean, I think that everyone so-called listen and learned for however long, like you said, it was all passed within a couple of months after George Floyd had passed. It was something like 28 million people posted a black square on Blackout Tuesday. And then what did you do with that black square? You Nothing. whitewashed it. I mean, yeah. it, it's been a full-blown, since the summer of 2020, there's been a full-blown white lash. Um, which is like, let's, let's just be frank, what's happening now, Nazism in this country, mm -hmm. full blown, you know, hatred, open hatred of black, brown folks, trans folks, marginalized people. Um, we're not just backsliding. I mean, it's, it is what we're seeing right now is so violent and so dangerous. And we are marching towards full blown genocide on a bunch of different fronts. And white women have got to get in this game mm -hmm. because you all are so used to being saved. Your damsels in distress, you're saved by your men. Um, your men brutalize you. And then, you know, they say, quote, save you. Um, but really you are saved by black indigenous and brown women. Mm -hmm. We save you and we can't do it. We would love to do it. We don't have the power to do it. And um, you do. And it's not going to work. So this is truly a scenario where we are facing the end of humanity with climate and guns. And it is on white women. It is on white men. It is on white humans to fix this. We cannot. Black and brown women don't have the power to swoop in and save the day like you all expect us to do. We just don't have the power. We would love to do it. Um, can't do it. And you all need to step in because not only our lives depend on it, your lives depend on it, your kids' lives depend on it, depend on it. Humanity depends on it. Like we are screwed. We are fucked. You mm -hmm. know, we're in we are in deep doo-doo. Guns are the number one killer of kids and teens in America. Climate catastrophe, it's catastrophe. The world, America, no one expected Maui to burn to the ground. Mm -hmm. you know? But the world is burning, the world is flooding, the world is overheating. And we have the power to change it. We have to go change it. Mm -hmm. we the power. We just have to go do it. You know, and white women, you all are so used to navel gazing and expecting things to fall into your lap. And my God, the amount of, of internet here, like warriors, you know, the, the forget about the black box. Even today, the amount of white women liking, commenting, sharing memes about anti-racism and this mm -hmm. and that. Where are y'all in real life? Mm -hmm. What are you doing in real life besides liking and sharing and commenting? I mean, that is virtue signaling. Mm -hmm. That is not a compliment. You know, like get off of your fucking asses and go do something. If not for anybody else, if you could care less about my brown ass, you don't, you could care less about anyone, anyone black. If you care about yourselves and if you care about your kids, 
go do something. Mm -hmm. Go do so Join here for the kids. That's what we're doing. And that's the, that's the perfect little prelude into what exactly is here for the kids and how did you come up with this idea? Because we had a uh, Tina on, oh geez. I mean, I feel like it was six months ago now who is the co-founder of here for the kids. And it was amazing. And she explained it, but there's going to be different people listening to this. And I want to know sure. how you came up with the idea. Yep. What exactly is it? Sure. So, um, you know, again, book came out November one film came out a couple weeks later, both of them. I mean, truly we have been sort of stunned by the popularity of both. So by March 27th, when I came up with this idea, um, call it what, four months, five months after, you know, book came out, um, thousands of white women at this point had, what can we do? What can we do? What can mm -hmm. we do? We've done so many book clubs. We'd started doing we had book launches. We started doing film screenings. What can we do? What can we do? And we would say like, first of all, you need to, ha you have to decolonize yourself. You have to extract, examine your whiteness so you can get rid of it. Like as much as you can, it's going to be a, mm -hmm. a lifelong journey. Um, you have to start organizing and you have to start shifting dollars truly i mean and, and that is when you know white people like you can't separate the white people from the almighty dollar all this shit's because of capitalism too exactly um, but if we don't start moving dollars and our bodies we're nothing is gonna nothing is gonna change so um we were saying this and then on the evening of march 27th i this is the day no one remembers it now because there have literally been hundreds of mass shootings since then but it was a nashville mass shooting and it was an apples to apples comparison with sandy hook which is why i was in bed that night trying to find more information on it so on that day three white babies um, were murdered third graders in nashville sandy hook was many more white babies than that kindergartners and first graders but mm -hmm. white babies so um I couldn't, I was laying there and I'm like, this is so crazy. It's been six hours and there's nothing, at least with Sandy. Mm -hmm. I remember I lived in Connecticut at the time. I lived not far from Sandy Hook. I had, my kids were little. I had lunch with Chris Murphy, who was my representative at the time. He's now a Senator. And he said, we got this. Congress has got this. And, um, and you know, we should have taken care of it with Columbine. After mm -hmm. Columbine, we didn't, but now we will. And now we, 10 years later, you know, 11 years later, like here we are, you know, and uh, they didn't, they didn't take care of it. And, and, and gun violence is, has metastasized. It's, it's a billion times worse. Um, but I did remember this with Sandy Hook. It was in the news for six months. It was in the news for six months. Nashville wasn't in the news for six hours and mm. I felt sick. So mm -hmm. as I was digging through, I find one article and somewhere in there, Joe Biden is quoted as saying, I've done everything I can do on guns. It is now up to Congress. What he meant is I've done everything I will do. Mm -hmm. And we all know Congress is in a, uh, Congress is no longer even functioning and it hasn't for a long time. It doesn't matter if it's Republicans. It doesn't matter if it's Democrats. It is a dysfunctional institution. Um, Amanda Seals has a documentary out now called In Amanda We Trust. Go watch it. Mm -hmm. um, Ilhan Omar, a sitting member of Congress, says out loud, I don't know why this has not gone viral, has said it out loud, we sit and stare at the clock in Congress because there's nothing to do. All they do is raise money and then do nothing. And then try to have viral Twitter moments or X moments or whatever it is to then raise more money. But, but functionally, they do nothing. So when Joe Biden says, I've done everything I can do, it's up to Congress, what he's saying is, I'm not doing shit we all know Congress is not doing shit. So that leaves us with what we have right now, which is genocide of our children by gun. That's where we are. So I'm like, fuck me. Like this is, mm -hmm. what, how have we accepted this? You know? Mm -hmm. So I swear, Caitlin, I stayed up for hours and I just start Googling. What, what can we do? What can we do? And I realized I'm like, I'm a, I'm a former law clerk on a federal court of appeals judge. I've read a ton of Supreme court cases and I'm like, let's think back. How have we had tectonic shifts in, in our history? And it's always, always organizing. It is always we the people. It is always civil disobedience. That is how shit gets done. Okay, let's start there. Um, we need to have a massive sit-in to, to force the people that we've hired to do this work to do it. So with federalism, I'm like, okay, Joe Biden says he's not gonna do it. We need to go to the states. 
Um, mm -hmm. I think at this juncture, the Democrats still have a chance of, of trying to do something. The Republicans are pretty much out for the moment. Um, okay, let's go to a blue state where there's a blue governor, but they're and they're high high um, instances, more high instances of gun violence towards kids. California is number one. Colorado is not far behind. And I just recently left Denver. I lived there for nine years. I know a lot of people there. And critical piece of our first action was white women because we're mm -hmm. like white women have the most privilege and the most power, um, least likely to get harmed by police. That is mm -hmm. a fact. Um, Guns. Guns are the living, breathing embodiment, dying embodiment of white supremacy. We have the Second Amendment because of white supremacy and anti-blackness. It was to give slave owners the right to massacre their enslaved people. We've had the proliferation of guns since 1791 when that amendment was ratified, when white people get particularly scared of black and brown people. George Floyd, Obama, 9-11, um, uh, COVID. These are facts. Uh, number three, guns are the number one killer of kids and teens in America including white kids. White supremacy is the number one killer of kids and teens in America. What the fuck are you white people going to do about it? That's it. So we called that. That was it is Denver, Colorado. We need thousands of white women to show up and demand the democratic governor, Jared Polis to sign an executive order banning guns and buying them back. Um, I had my first Zoom on it on April 10th. We had the action less than two months later. Mm -hmm. And we had gotten thousands and thousands and thousands of RSVPs from white women. And only roughly about a thousand showed up. Fine. Mm -hmm. Great start. Seven weeks, a thousand, 122 um, media hits, massive movement underway. Pro proof of concept. And also now with the next go round. Um, which is our next, we just announced our next action this week. Um, what did we learn? What did we learn from Denver? Number one, we cannot count on the white women. That's number one. We need everybody. So the next action will be everybody, 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 everybody. Um, Jared Polis said the same thing as Joe Biden. I can't do it. I can't, it's unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need the 20, we need a 28th amendment to repeal the second amendment. This is unconstitutional, right? And so, we were like, okay, well, if the Democratic governors are going to say the same shit as the president, we might as well go to the president. And we don't have time. Mm -mm. We don't have time. I mean, this is considered it's it, it the the violence this summer has metastasized. It's getting worse and worse and worse. How many more kids? How many more teens? How many more college students jumping out of dorm rooms? And and it, how much? How much? How many more? How many more? Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing is, we are here for the kids. And we watched what happened this summer. And some cli climate scientists are calling this summer the first extinction summer. Mm -hmm. How much more death? Truly, how much more death? How many people are still missing in Maui? And America is the biggest carbon violator in the world. And our actions are destroying the rest of the world. My people in South Asia are going to be one of the first to be wiped yeah. off the planet, largely mm -hmm. because of what we're doing here. As Americans, we have a duty to the world to force our president to act because they don't have any control in the rest of the world over our president. This is our duty. So we, after tons and tons of hundreds and hundreds of calls and discussions, we decided if we're going to do this one humongous rally next spring, which we are March 9th, 2024, Washington, D.C., mark your calendar, ADA accessible, all of it, we have to add in climate. And we are mm -hmm. an abolitionist movement. That's what we are. We are not here to regulate inhumanity. That's what we've been doing. We've been regulating yeah. inhumanity. And the reason it doesn't work, the reason things are getting worse is you cannot regulate inhumanity. You have to abolish it. And so it made per perfect sense. We need to abolish fossil fuels. And P.S., if we don't abolish foss fossil fuels, the lights are going to go out. This is not sustainable. You know what is sustainable? <coughs> Renewable energy. Investing in renewable energy, banning fossil fuels, phasing them out. No, the day that Joe Biden signs. So our, for that, it's signing executive order to declare a climate emergency, which will enable him to do a bunch of stuff. And people are like, but does that mean that like I can't use my gas stove the next day? Like, of course not. This is the beginning of the end. It will take time to undo this. Right. The day that the, the executive order is signed to ban guns, will guns be off the street? Of course not. No. It will take time. But this is the beginning. It took the abolitionists with chattel slavery a long time. Mm -hmm. you know, exactly. A long time. So we are 
the the early adopters. We are the origin. You know, we're the first abolitionists around guns and fossil fuels in this country. Um, not we're not the first. I mean, there are other people who've been working in this space for a long time, but it's it's not like other shit has worked. Exactly. Let's exactly. Let's get more state legislation. Let's regulate this. Let's regulate that. No, it hasn't worked. And at some point, we have to realize that voting blue, no matter who, is not going to cut it. Yes, vote. Vote because your life depends on it. And organizing. Mm -hmm. Organize, organize, organize because your life depends on it. And so voting is just the floor. Absolutely vote. I'm not here to tell you not to vote. Vote, vote, vote. And organize. Show up on March 9th. Bring people with you. Spend your days educating people. Talk to people. Build this into your practice. Anti-racism is a practice. It's a way of life. It's not like checking a box. One day I'm going to do this. It is a it, it is a living and breathing. You make different mm -hmm. choices in your life when you when you become an anti-racist. This abolition work is not like a, you know, I'm going to I'm going to send an email today and then end of it. No, every day. What mm -hmm. are you going to do today? A and every day, set aside an hour, email people, call people, text people, get people to sign up for emails, have people, you know, follow us on social media, money. So yes. like we never talk about here, you know, who the real successful abolitionists of our time are Caitlin is the Republicans. Look at the shirt. They, they ban Muslims, exactly. they ban abortions. They have a vision for a world that they want free of things that they deem to harm them. And in their minds, black people harm them. Brown people harm them, immigrants harm them, trans people harm them. So they ban them. How do they do it? They throw a shit ton of money at it. Do you know how expensive, do you know how expensive reversing Roe versus Wade was? Millions, if not billions. Mm -hmm. And here we are being like, what is what this? Do we do? What, what, what do we do? What do we do? And then we're we're in the process of raising $3.5 million, which is a drop in the bucket versus what they've spent. And people are like, where's the money gonna go? Marketing. Yeah, Ad exactly. Marketing. Everyone needs vendors. to know. Vendors. Do you know how expensive it's going to be for us to get this out into the mainstream? It is going to cost a fortune. Mm -hmm. Ads, digital ads, You know, maybe in Los Angeles, billboards, maybe in New York, mm -hmm. subway ads. Like We have a lot of people to reach. We have a lot of work to do, and that costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So people have to start writing checks and, and then ask other people to write checks. And and that's it is like my ask for everyone. This is not a siren Tina show. Yeah. We cannot do it on our own. We will not do it on our own. We need everybody. So that means every person needs to commit to a dollar amount. I'm going to raise $1,000. I'm going to raise $10,000. I'm going to raise $25,000 and then go make phone calls. It is not rocket science. It is yeah. not rocket science. And white women in particular, white men, by the way, that's the other thing. White men need to start coughing up money here. White men need to be writing checks. But you white women have access to those white men. And you need to go press your husbands, fathers, brothers, sons, uncles to write checks. People need to yeah. start coughing up the dough. This is not going to be cheap. Yeah, 100%. And the thing that always gets me as you were talking, I would give up anything in the world to know that my daughter is safe. I would give up anything in the world to know that she could run around freely, breathe clean air, and not be shot. Like, you know what I mean? I would give up anything for her to walk into school and not have to do an active shooter drill. As a former educator, it was the most horrific thing to have kindergartners hide in a corner with the lights out, everything shut off, people coming through, pounding. They were so scared and cannot conceptualize that at their age. And we are doing everything <laughs> backwards. So the fact that there are people who are just so clung to either their guns or like you said, their gas stoves. It's a stove. Like it is a stove, people. <laughs> it's So let me ask you this, Caitlin, if you were willing to give anything up, Tell us, tell your listeners, what are you going to do in service to March 9th? Yeah, 100%. So I am actually near D.C., um, so I will be there. This is something that, Syra, you and I have talked about it a little bit, but not extensively. 
ever since the pandemic hit, I have lived a very, very, very sheltered life and have dealt with some significant mental health stuff surrounding getting back into the world. I say all this and share this with all of you so that you know that my fear and anxiety surrounding going to something like this is going to be the highest it's probably ever been in my entire life. And I'm going to be there. And I have been calling people and texting people. And, you know, this is going to come out this week. Everyone knows that I've been working with Here for the Kids since the beginning, but I we're also going to be collaborating on our merch now um, in effort to hopefully raise more money. I'm also making monthly donations to Here for the Kids. There are so many things that all of us can be doing. And the fact that we have this beautiful gift in social media too, and we don't always use it the right way, but we can use it when there are real action steps that are out there that we can say, hey, I'm going to keep talking about this. I'm not going to stop talking about this. I'm not going to stop talking about this because this is why. Because if our humanity is at risk in the way that it is, and we're not doing anything about it, then we're not going to be here anyway to, to do all the other things that we're, we're not going to be here to post the funny memes. We're not going to be here to, to share the latest gossip that's coming from Bravo TV. Like we're not going to be here to slip on our yoga pants and go and take a yoga class and sip our lattes because this is something that we, and when I say we, I think it's very important that I'm always specific, white people are not going to get out of right? We're not getting out of the climate crisis. We're not getting out of gun violence. We can get out of racism. We can get out of transphobia if we are not a white transhuman. We can get out of Roe v. Wade, quite frankly, in most situations, because if God forbid I needed to go and get an abortion tomorrow. I would have the financial means to do so. I would have the transportation to do so. I'm not getting out of going in a supermarket and having someone come in there and kill a bunch of people. Nope. No, no one is. No one is. And so that's the thing that I want people to actually fully internalize is all of this. I'm crazy busy. And, mm -hmm. you know, white women always do this thing where you all think that you have lives and the rest of us don't. Mm -hmm. Like I have kids, I have a uh, elderly parent who needs help. Like I have a job I have to put food on the table. Like I also am deeply aware that if we don't get this done, there is none of those things. Like there is no more world, you know, there's no more, what you do, Caitlin is going to be gone. Mm -hmm. Selling social justice merch finished. That's mm -hmm. done. There's no more. There's no more education. Schools are going to be continue to be gutted. We basically don't have health care anyway. I know. Um, it's it's just like people need to set aside things to make room for this. Mm -hmm. And everybody who has the privilege of a roof over their heads, access to health care, good health, you know, able-bodied, um, food on the table your basic needs are met and you've got extra change for Starbucks or yoga class or whatever, you need to get in this movement and mm -hmm. it can be in a ton of different ways, but yeah. as, as the lowest hanging fruit share on social media, share our posts. We have brilliant social media, share our posts, bring people in, sign up for our emails, make a $5 donation for seven months. That's $35. Mm -hmm. Hopefully mm -hmm. you can do that, you know? Um, and we're calling upon artists and musicians to do art and music. So if you're an artist or a musician and you want to contribute your talent, email me. And Caitlin, you have my email. You can put that put that out there. Email me. Yeah, absolutely. That. If you have, if you know people in the media, put us in touch with media people. If you want to write an op-ed for your local paper, do that. I mean, there's just a ton of stuff that you can do. Go and do it. Mm -hmm. Just go and do it. But plug in plug in, join, you know, sign up for the emails, follow us on socials and start getting engaged. There's a lot of uh, us having these conversations online and it's really interesting and it's giving people hope. It's giving people hope. 
I was just going to say, and, and, and let this be an episode in which you feel motivated and hopeful, because I think what happens particularly with white women and correct me if I'm wrong, but what happens many times is that we get in this, what can I do? I can't do anything. I feel isolated. I feel powerless. Woe is me. And we're telling you on a silver platter, <laughs> we're handing it to you what you can do. Yeah. Do I know 100% for certainty that this is going to be the, the end all be all? I believe it with every ounce of my being. Yes. But I don't know. But in the meantime, do you know if you're going to get shot tomorrow? Exactly. Exactly. Isn't it worth trying? I mean, like, I just, yeah. you know, white people always like, but how we didn't know it's going to work. Oh, we don't know. We hope. That's what I mean. Yes. We don't know if we're going to, like, isn't it better to try rather than continue yeah. to just let live in this? You know, is, is, is it going to be your town? Is, is Miami going to be wiped off the map? Is, is, is this, you know, like it, people have to start understanding and feeling and thinking and connecting the the, bra the brain with the heart and mm. getting over what I call, there's basically a pretty clear path here. People are violently indifferent to mm -hmm. our own pain and suffering. We have to get past violent indifference. When you get past, past violent indifference, you recognize your power to affect change. When you recognize your power to affect change, you acknowledge your duty to act you have a duty to act mm -hmm. and you have a duty to act you actually step one have to bring others along community change requires community mm -hmm. so this cannot be a personal journey this is this is a bring everybody with you you have to bring everybody with you community change requires community and that's it caitlin is i'd beckon all of you to pull your heads out of your asses and join the movement and bring everyone with you. Yeah. I think that's a great way. That's a great way to wrap this up. However, I have to ask you, and I think I'll know what your answer is going to be because I think exactly what we've been talking about for the past 45 minutes is exactly this. But this wouldn't be the kindnesses podcast if I did not ask you, what is kindness? And I mean, it, it's this, right? <laughs> it's it's uh, what you're yeah. talking about. Kindness is showing up for yourself, loving yourself and showing up for yourself. Kindness is loving your children and showing up for your children and other people's children. Kindness is loving and believing in humanity and wanting nothing more than to protect and save humanity. Mm -hmm. And that is very different from what white women deem to be nice. White nice is the opposite of kindness. Mm -hmm. It is, it is smiling to people's faces and stabbing them in the back. That's it. So let's not be nice, fuck nice, and let's be kind. I'm here for it. And I am here for the kids, and I want all of the rest of you to be too. Syra, thank you for everything you do. Thanks, Caitlin. I truly don't think that this week's episode could have ended any better. I want you to go into this week showing up for yourself, loving yourself. As Syra said, showing up for others. And for the love of all of us, show up for Here for the Kids. Thank you all so much for listening to this episode of the Kindness Is podcast. If you love it and it's adding even a little bit of value to your life, we would love, love, love if you could subscribe, rate, and review so we can reach even more people and make this world a little bit more kind.